And today's video I have one of these little mini Sony CD players. I've owned a couple of these in the past, I can't remember what I did with them in the end, but they're kind of handy if you just want a little bit of music in a compact form. Your compact compact disc player. And I think these actually fit it onto some of the um I guess not really boom boxes, but the little mini shelf systems like the FH series and stuff, these would actually go with them. But for some reason I picked up a couple just separately over the years back when I had a shop. And the main sort of issues with these, like most of these Sony's, is you get the spin motors playing up in them and causing skipping. Because these should have the uh, KSS 240 type mech or something around that era. And they have the long shafted spin motors. That used to be seem to be the main issue with these things. What's it got under here? Just something moulded into the plastic. 90, 91, 92. Don't know, would it be that old? Not sure what year these actually came out. Copyright 1990 on the manual, so they probably are that sort of age. This actually had the manual remote and everything, so that's nice. I've never read a book for one of these. Safety precautions, notes on installation, notes on connection, how to put your batteries in your remote, playing the entire disc, locating a particular section, fading in, fading out, locating a particular point, playing a random order, playing repeatedly, playing in a desired order. That's about the only time you really, you could usually work those things out anyway, this, but they had a few extra features like that. This might be a little bit earlier making this one. Supposedly this thing works. But we'll soon find out if that's really the case. Yeah, it's only quite a small display on it. I'm sure it will play a disc, but whether it actually plays it well, I'm a bit suspicious on. Because like I say, I know these tend to be a bit skippy and that sort of thing, but you never know, this one might be fine. If it's survived this long, it either hasn't had a lot of use or maybe it's had the motor replaced in it. And what's that little oh, control system? So I think it yeah, definitely could plug into some sort of system. I think it was more just here to start it up or stop it or something. Did we get a table of contents? I missed it if we did. Too much too young. You'll see there we're skipping already. Yeah, not great. So that's about what I would have expected. Like I say, people tell you things work, but they don't necessarily work 100%. But I thought it was grabbing because they're quite a cool little CD player, these things. And probably has a bit of value these days anyway, if it does fit one of the FH type series. Little stacks of sort of semi-component type systems. But I assume that's what they're made for. I don't know why else they would have sold these things. They must have gone on some sort of little shelf system ah, geez, it doesn't want to come apart that should just slide off sort of upwards and off man that is tight ah, I don't want to crack something or break it here it comes it's slowly coming maybe it's got a bit of that felt stuff this end does not want to that is as tight as I don't know what's Holding that down, but can't, must be more than just a bit of dust in there. Oh, there it goes. There's yeah, some sort of maybe liquid bean in there or something. Must be something sticky. Yeah, I think that said something. Someone spilled a drink on it or something. Oh, yeah, you can see a bit of stuff on the front panel. It is a KSS 240, so it is the pretty much the standard mech. Bit of dust in it, so that could cause some issues. Could be the lasers had its day too. But, you know, given its age, it's not doing 
too bad if it is from the early 90s. But can I wind that laser back? I probably can. A little bit of dust on the cover there. Don't think it's dirty, but it's possibly got a little bit of something on it. But this may be a contender for a new motor. I assume you can still buy the things. I do have a few lying around. I think I salvaged the other things that were probably okay, but I don't know for sure. I don't like using second-hand ones, but they used to only be about $10. They're probably more than that now, but it just wasn't worth your time to put a, a used one in anything and most of them are faulty anyway I think that's a slightly bit shinier than it was probably wouldn't hurt to lube the slide bar but I don't think that's going to be causing that issue Still a bit too sensitive, I think. Gets back to the same spot, all right. Not so much there, though. while I'm at it. These are good remotes because you could, up to a certain number anyway, you can just go straight to the track or you can press the 10 button and go even further so you could directly go to a particular track. It looks like that works. 22 is the last one, yeah, that all works. Repeat, fader, time, yeah, that all seems to work. Too much too young. Let's try a worse condition disc. And see what it's like on that, but I definitely not as good as it should be I don't think it would probably get by if you only played really good discs in it disc actually plays better than my CD players especially with the bad discs oh, look, we've got a dead spider or spider casing when it's grown there I'm in two minds whether it's worth doing anything with this or not. It looks like we've got to take probably the door off, or the door front off, just sort of squeeze it out and upwards a bit. I think this almost could get away with just the service on this. It does seem a little bit more skippy than it should be. I think these only have two screws. But 
Yeah, I'm impressed how well I can play bad this. Now the other thing we need to check is things like the rubber mounts. And those sort of things. I think this is mounted on a sprung. It does feel a bit stiff, so it's not impossible. We've got something, an actual mechanical issue rather than motors or anything. Especially if this thing hasn't been used much or in a long time. Yeah, I think they're all right. That one's kind of not. Yeah, I wonder if they've gone a bit soft or something. Lost their springer because that one doesn't seem to lift up. That doesn't do anything. I think that should move a bit more than that. I don't know. Very hard to tell with all of these things. But this was one of the problems. It's got 92 fifth on the quality control stamp or whatever it is. So that's probably the year it was built. It was an issue with CD players as often these rubber mounts would change slightly in their sort of viscosity I guess, their rubberiness or whatever you want to call it. Yeah that's stuck on, often a sign that rubber's starting to go and you can't, couldn't really tell, there's no way to really measure it. And that could cause issues of skipping and stuff because just due to lack of so that top bit is pushed in. I don't think. I think that should sit up a bit. Yeah, that little bit. And I think they're a bit softer than that, but I could be wrong. And this was the problem. How do you measure? There probably is a device out there somewhere to measure how flexible a piece of rubber is. But unless you've got like the original measurements of what it was like when it came out of the factory, you'd still not none the wiser really anyway. I think this mech was out of that Sony 5 display that I scrapped. Looks like it's also a 92. Oh no, this one's missing a laser, so that, where did I put the mech out of that one, I wonder? Okay, I found the Sony mech, it was under the bench. I thought I'd put it in with the other ones, but I think it's got nicer, softer blue ones. They look to be the same as the others, so I think what we'll do is we'll pinch all those out of there. Looks like Sony may have even made these out of a better synthetic or more synthetic material or something I wouldn't be surprised if that helps it avoid the skipping a little bit but the fact this thing's working so well it makes me think the motor's probably okay in it after all so if we pull all these out so that old 5 display might have come in extra handy and I guess if worse comes to worse, I don't know if I ever tried the mech in that, I could even pinch the spin motor out of that and put a used one in there. Is it actually even the same mechanism? It might be. Yeah, I think these are all stamped out of the same metal and everything. KSS 240, whether the board's actually the same different chips on it but you could probably just unsolder that board and swap it with that one so that's another option is just swap the mech over with the laser and motors well, I wouldn't be surprised if replacing these makes a bit of difference no guarantees but often worth a try so we need the big part of the spring upwards I think was it yeah that's what was stuck to the other one But this is the sort of stuff that's starting to go in these things, unfortunately, and makes life a bit harder because I don't think you can just go to Sony anymore and order the parts. And sometimes you could buy these whole mechs quite easily, I think. Once upon a time, maybe they're still available, but it's a bit of a pain if you've got to buy a whole laser and everything just for some rubber mounts. See if it's a little bit more 
resistant to tapping and stuff. The fact that it actually doesn't jump too far tends to keep its spot. It's playing the really bad disc, make me th makes me think everything in this is in actually pretty good nick. It's just when you tap it, which is actually just the physical shock is not being absorbed as well as it should. Which of course is an issue in a CD player, you don't want them to be too, too prone to physical shock. Okay, get that in, that's it. Sometimes they're a bit fiddly. Now screw. Anything else need cleaning? I don't think so. There's a little bit of muck in there, something flat ground. Give it a quick dust out. Yeah, it may be a very low hours unit by the look of it. Oh, I probably should have possibly pushed that in first, but you should be able to get it. That's it. I'll screw it all back together, otherwise it's not really a good comparison. Where's that good disc? Hmm, jump straight to 22, that's weird. Should have given it a lube, I guess, while I was in there. Still about the same, I think. Slide bar a little. It's got a little bit of grease on it, I think. I just put a bit of lighter oil on there. front end as well. Put dust on there. Too much too young. Platter off. Probably should give that a quick clean. Just make sure there's nothing stuck to that. Oh, a little bit of stuff coming off.
Admittedly, this disc is probably longer than this machine was made for too. It's 22 tracks. How many minutes was it? A lot of these didn't like those longer discs. You know, 77 minutes because they were set to the Red Book standard. So that probably doesn't help. It hasn't made any major difference on that disc. I don't think it's made any real difference, so maybe these are a bit more tap sensitive. Okay, I just had a look in some of the stuff I had in there in my CD mech drawer, and I do actually have a brand new RF31043, I think it is. I think I did order a couple of these just in case the ones in my Sony ever played up, and looks like I've used one for something. So these would have come from Wagner Electronics way back in the early 2000s or something so I do actually have one so I might be worth putting that in Yeah, you know, I used to just use a it's a certain height above it sort of just below the tops of the screws the base of the actual platter piece here and I used to usually go by a screwdriver because these flat blade screwdrivers just fit under the motor will lift a bit you don't want it that high it's not that critical because the laser can adjust to set the exact height but basically we should be able to just force that off and yeah, I don't use a CD player anymore so I don't think I'm going to use that motor for anything anyway probably wouldn't hurt to Put a new one in this one. Maybe this is a waste of time. Yeah, it's a positive to the front. Of course, I've got multiple screw holes in them, so you can mount them in multiple ways. That's why sometimes I used to put a little black mark on the thing to the chassis just to make sure I got it lined up right. But you'll soon find out if the circuit board doesn't fit, that's so no big deal anyway. You just rotate it, unscrew it, and rotate it if it's wrong. But nice to not have to screw it in twice. tight and again start putting this on but don't go too far because it'll tend to slide all of a sudden put the screwdriver under and at least helps you control that should be the right height and that's basically all there is to it I guess I should have checked the circuit board fitted first but I was pretty sure it was in the right spot so yeah probably best to before you put the platter back on just make sure the circuit board goes back on and you have actually got screws in the right spot and the pins on the motor facing the right way but may make, make absolutely no difference at all or it may fix it but a lot of these players that make an amazing amount of difference to put a new spin motor in there Oh, one thing I didn't do, damn it. I forgot to plug the laser in, didn't I, moron? 
luckily I can get access to it. You can spin them back to the end here. And access it from the back so you don't have to take the board out or anything. Normally you wouldn't unplug that so it's not a thing. Now I'm knocking all the springs off. But yeah, I'm more happy with those blue mounts than those old ones were definitely not the best. These top pits that stick up had disappeared down inside them a bit, collapsed in sort of thing. But admittedly, it didn't make any real difference changing them. I don't know how critical they are, but I have had CD players where the only issue with skipping was those things had gone hard, or maybe too soggy in some. But it was a thing occasionally to have to replace those. Got all the other screws, that's the screw for the this part of the mech Yeah, I don't think a new motor made much difference, surprisingly. So it must be about as good as these things are. It did seem to be playing pretty well as far as bad discs, so that's always a good sign. Just seems a little bit more tap sensitive than it should be, but maybe it's just the way these things are. But makes me a bit happier knowing there's a brand new motor in there because they were one of the main failure points in these things. Uh, that is a tight fitting case. And that's about it. It needs a little bit of a clean on the outside, but other than that, this should come up almost mint condition, I think. A little bit of muck on the display. I'll just give that a quick clean just to see if that's got any scratches. And there's a little bit of some glue or something on there, I think. Yeah, that's in very good condition for a change. It's got a couple of small marks on the display, I think, on the plastic. Uh, gonna come off a little tiny scratch but way better than you'd expect for the age of the thing so it's probably it is a low hours unit well those things someone bought and never got around to actually use it much yeah at least that's got a new motor in it so that's one of the main failure points in these things probably didn't actually need it so I might keep that other motor as a spare for a second hand unit somewhere if I get another Sony that needs a motor I wouldn't put one in for a customer you might as well just put a new one in and make sure it's gonna last I think we'll just write okay on that one and chuck it in the CD drawer of bits 
And oh yeah, it's a bit of gluey stuff there, isn't it? I think I should get rid of that. Hopefully without doing anything to the plastic or anything, I wouldn't use meth on this front bit, but unless I was really desperate to get rid of some glue or something, you've got to be careful because that's just painted. But this is like a stick on vinyl on the, the metal part. Still a little, that's just one of my new fingerprints. But yeah, that all seems to be up and running nicely. Not sure if it's quite as good on the skipping as it should be, but too much, too young. Tried a different laser. Tried a different motor. Still seems a little more sensitive than I would like. Sideways, it's not too bad. It's just the up and down that it's not happy with. But yeah, I think that'll keep this little thing going. And yeah, I can't believe how good a condition it's in. The only reason I grabbed it was because it was actually really nice condition. Remote's probably looks like it's had a little bit of use, but still not a lot. And manual's a bit tattered and torn. Looks like it's got sun damage or something. Coffee stains, the usual thing. A few damaged pages, dog ears. It's almost like someone used the manual a lot and nothing else. <laughs> So that's a bit weird. But yeah, quite a nice little unit. Not sure if I'll use it or on sell the thing. But this is a perfect sort of thing you need for like an FH7 type system or something that didn't come with CD player originally. It's obviously not going to quite match the look of it. But it's the sort of thing you want with those systems. Definitely on a CD player if you're going to use them for anything rather than just cassette. And of course they're good if you if you do listen to the radio so that should finish that one off thanks for watching